Right then, another vlog. Another day doing loads of vlogs, but anyway. So, this one's been a long time coming. We've had this car for just over two years now. It keeps coming up on me, uh, Google pictures saying, two years ago you did this, you did that, you did other, and it brings back bad memories when we got this car, but anyway. So, we've campaigned this on loads of track days, and I think we got it ready in, from when we got it. Let's put a picture of what it looked like when we got it. And it looks a lot more finished than it was. Um, to the first track, we were about two months, just just over, just under. I can't remember exactly, but anyway, it didn't take long. And um, we had a bit of a bet going on uh, with Clive, the guy we got the car from, that we'd have it ready in time. And he didn't think we would, but we did. So anyway, we basically bought this as an unfinished project. It meant to have had a 20 valve turbo in with 500 horsepower or whatever. It was a brand new car that got delivered to the company that were going to do it and they never quite finished it and it were, it were a real mess and then Clive got it and he sort of put a better cage in it. John at Tyler Motorsport put it in and did a really nice job and we raced with John as well so it worked out quite a nice bit of a decent uh, conversation starter. Um, so the cage, cage were in there already which we'll get in and have a look at it but then pretty much everything else that were done has all been redone so it really has been a labour of love to get it to how it is and every time we take it on a track day we find something else that we want to fix on it and something else we want to do so we'll have a quick whip round it a quick look and then we can talk about what we've done and why we've done it and what we do to improve it if we if we think we can so it's basically a, a standard 2012 Skoda Citigo it done zero miles when we got it I think it's done two and a half thousand now and if, nearly every one of them has been on track it's drove through a couple of track days but Nearly all of them's on track. Um, and we'll get we'll get it on the ramp and have a look underneath to see how we've done everything. But basically, we stretched the wheelbase as much as we could because it's quite short. I wanted to stretch it a little bit longer. I think now we're only about 20, 20 or thirty mil shorter than like an Abifa Fabia Polo platform, and we're a little bit narrower. Not a lot narrower, but only a little bit narrower. I think twenty or thirty mil narrower. So it's not as short and as narrow as people think it is. The idea was to keep it as factory as we could from the outside. The, um, the spoiler on the back, that came about the week before we were going to the Nürburgring. I watched a few videos and saw a few cars that looked like they were squirrelling about in the high speed bit, so I thought we're going to have to do something to try and push the back end down a little bit because this has always been tail happy. If we've got any videos of it being tail happy on track, we'll put them in now. always tail happy and the ring is really fast and stability is far more important than like the slow speed turning that you need at a lot of UK tracks so we put that on there a little bit detracting away from the original keep it factory looking but I think it's subtle enough not to cause any problems we put the gurney which we've ended up recently painting it's not the best thing but it's as good as it we're going to get because this is quite flexible but we put the gurney on there so that we can get the heat out of the engine bay because there's a lot of heat generated in here and the same with the bonnet vent because it's all so tightly packed we had to put the bonnet vent in to um, to get all the heat out of there and it's got a little gurney on the back there so we've got this little gurney pulling the heat out here and the gurney creating a low pressure here to pull the heat out here which it's as good as it's going to get and then obviously the front bumper it's stretched and skewed and pulled in all directions, same with the arches. So we've ended up with sort of dodgy panel gaps everywhere that we're going to try to get sorted probably next week. Um, but we might not have time to film before then. That's why we're doing this before we've done a little bit. So if before this video goes out, we've got them sorted, we'll put a picture of it looking a bit tidier. And the reason it's got some holes in bumper, I ripped front bumper off last time we're out on track as well. But anyway, so the intercools and radiators don't look too different to how it came when we got it but it's actually very very different because <coughs> the cores that were used well they weren't old or terrible but they weren't as good as the more modern cores that we've got here so these cores 
we source them from a company in the UK and we'll use them for all this high-end stuff. Um, they're very expensive, I think like 400 quid each car or something like that, something ridiculous. But these are the same that you use on touring cars, some Formula One cars will use this sort of stuff, especially historic stuff, this is all Formula One technology brought forward. But we sort of tried to keep it where we didn't have to cut the bumper too much and initially we painted these black so it just looked like um, it just looked like a, a radiator. So to the untrained eye, if you took the spoiler and the bonnet crap, which we have got another standard spoiler, uh, another standard uh, bonnet that fits straight on, if we took all that crap off, it'd look totally standard in my opinion. So we've got this, the number plate, oh dear, it's stuck on pretty well. I don't want to rip the Velcro off though. But the number plate is covering up the oil cooler and a bit of the intercooler. But we've ended up with these are the sort of, this is probably as good as you can get cooling wise because it's so tightly packed and the engine's so close behind it as well. And it's still not perfect. If you put these radiators in the Golf, something like that, it'd be too cool. We'd ju it just would be absolutely fine. So. We have gone OTT, but still it's caused some problems. So if we have any more trouble with the cooling on this, which we've not had last time out on track, but it was quite cold, but we'll see in the summer. If we do have some more trouble, we'd have to put the radiator in the back that that poses its own set of problems as well. So we're not going to do that, but hopefully I stick this back on reasonably straight. But anyway, so we'll pop the bonnet and have a look under there first. So as you can see, where the dipstick is the engine is really far forward compared to um, in most cars and we've got a fair bit of room at the back probably as much if not a bit more now the rain tray has been chopped out compared to um, most cars that we normally work on so to get the engine in we obviously had to modify all the slam parts all chopped to bits and everything notched out and so i don't know why that melted but it did we've put a beefer engine mounts in both sides so that's got um all the chassis been welded up to take the abifa polo fabia mount so that they were the same as what we had on our race car so we didn't have to have loads of different spares and it put the engine in a decent place because the abifa mount's quite tight up against the engine as well and the gearbox one we wanted them ratios so it made sense to use an abifa mount rather than like a mark four golf one you can get it quite quite low down and quite um quite tight and we've not really had to do much to the chassis legs other than weld onto the top of the chassis legs so engine spec wise if you watched the other videos like the Rosen and stuff like that it's pretty pretty run-of-the-mill what we normally do sort of our ported head well it's a 2 litre 16 valve common rail from an Ibiza like the, the yellow one and um, ported head that we've done our race cams our tubular manifold, this is a top mounted one with a BMW housing so it's V-band so it's easy to take apart. Top mounted, it's a 2872, um, all our boost pipe work, all that, all that carry on going to obviously to the intercoolers. Stage 3 fuel pump, stage 2 solenoid injectors, 2700 bar fuel pressure sensor. We've gone a little bit custom on the inlet to do what we wanted to do. We had to notch a few bits out and what have you, but it's just how we wanted to do things. You didn't have to do it like this. Um, ceramic coated pistons that have been machined and balanced, H beam rods. This one's got an eight valve PD cranking, which is about four to five kilos heavier than the one that normally comes in this engine, but it's got bigger balance weights, which mm, when you're revving them, you probably want them, but we've gone the other way in the Golf and gone for the lighter one and uh, I think that sounds a bit revier and it feels a bit better but we've still got an heavy flywheel hanging off end that's the biggest sort of dictator of what's going to make it rev faster or not but I like to keep the heavy flywheel to keep it quiet and uh, keep the momentum going because once you drop off boost and a turbo as big as this it's not going to um, it's not going to spool up as quick as you've not got a nice flywheel there keeping it engine turning but anyway so ARP bolts, head studs pretty much everything there's a full list in the description you can click on there and you could just add everything to cart and press buy but it probably costs you an absolute fortune the engine build is what we spend a lot of time on it's, we've got stuff like the electric water pumps on there which that's hidden along at the front you can't really see but there's pipe work going all over the place for that and um, 
all the cust- all all the hoses are custom. We've got one of our thermostat housings with a, an 80 degree thermostat in there. There's a bit of a heater matrix on this as well, which adds a little bit of pipe work that we've got going down there. Three inch exhaust, which God knows how we managed to squeeze that in. Um, and you can just see the scruffy part of the custom subframe there, which should have been cleaned, but you can't really uh, get to clean that. But it's um, that's got an Abifa steering rack on as well, so when we go racing, we've got the Abifa spares and that all works. So this, I'm sure I've missed loads of stuff out, but this is going to end up being a five-hour-long video if we don't um, if we don't get cracked on. Obviously, you can see here there's some brake reservoirs and there's no servo, so that's a little bit of a hint to what's going on inside. And then we've got one of those big um, fuel filter setups there because we always like to keep the fuel as filtered as possible. Like I said, there's tons of stuff under here that's probably missed, but look on the spec sheet if you want to look at any stuff in more detail. Make sure that's done, make sure that's on. So, onto the inside. Oh, one of the things. Because of where the turbo is and where it'd be notched out, we ended up having to go to left and drive wipers, so they do go the wrong way. But anyway, that don't really matter. So, <coughs> inside the car, you can see the roll cage, really nice job. It's more than adequate for the use this car gets. It's um, really, really good. And um, we've added a couple of extra bars, and we added this in a couple more, I think, to strengthen it up a little bit but it uh, pretty much as it can. Got the motor drive seats in. These are just so comfy. You can drive this for hours on end, no problem. We've got an extra large one in that side. That's why it's got these little inserts so we can, if somebody's a bit bigger, then get in. Because the, the idea behind this car, we'll build it to do more passenger rides than uh, anything else. Got the Shroff harnesses. That's always what we run in our cars these are the thinner ones to work with the hands device um, O and P steering wheel with quite a decent extension boss on there because we sat quite far back and quite low down in this car so it, although it's a small car you don't feel like it when you're driving it and then there's just so many little touches it, it's going to take forever to go through them but basically we flocked all the dash the clocks are from like a Leon Cupra and um, the reason we did that is because you sat so low, the standard Citigo clocks, which I think we've got a picture somewhere of the dash before, or at least a Citigo dash, really tall, you'd have not been able to see much, so we chopped it down and modified it and did what we're doing. Got the 80 PSI dual boost gauge, which that's got EMP monitoring in there as well, so we can keep an eye on things when we're on track. If EMP start getting high, we know we've got a problem. Just a normal Golf Mark IV sort of style headlight switch all mounted on extension so you can actually get to it when you sat in seat. Mark IV Golf accelerator pedal mounted to a tilt and box that we extended back. All the AP cylinders which that's been a bit of a pain to get sorted. Um, standard shifter but with some custom cables. We did have a sequential in at some point but somebody made us an offer on it and we just sold it because I won't say I didn't like it but it weren't my favourite thing in car. It didn't really uh, didn't really appeal to me. Got fly off handbrake just for that rally spec. We've got an extra bias valve here, as well as the one that's down here, which Danny's hating me for moving the camera about. This one does a pedal box, so it moves a spherical bearing across, and then that one does the actual hydraulic side. Custom switch gear, lock and unlock the car in here because we've got rid of all the factory stuff inside. This is to turn the camera system, we've got wired in, hard wired into the car. That says it switches map, I'm not sure if it does anymore, it used to do. And then we've got stuff to turn fan, this is to put heat in the car. We've turned power steering on and off because it's got an Abifa uh, power steering pump. Brake, that turns off the switch, so if you use the handbrake it disconnects the rear Aldex, that's what does that. And then you've got, we can turn the four wheel drive system off, switch for the nitrous, switch for the bottle heater, which the nitrous is not in at the minute, but it will be in before we take it next on track, just for, just for laugh. Um, yeah, loads of so uh, this wouldn't be too far away from a full-blown race car if we just added an extinguisher maybe I think Scott had it in his head that he wanted to do that this year and take it to the Burkitt but we'll see what happens so in the boot I'm not sure if this will I think I have to have ignition on for this to work 
So because of the four wheel drive system, this has got a bit of a strange tank in it. But this is where one of the cameras should be. I don't know why there's not a camera in there. That's uh, going on Danny's jobs list. So we've ended up basically putting, I think this pumps out of a BMW and this swirl pot's one that we just got off eBay cheap. But we've basically put, um, put this in because the standard tank, it did have foam in there but then the foam wasn't suitable for diesel, so it was surging because it weren't getting to the pickup and the pickup were in a crap place. So we've ended up basically putting a standard sender unit in there that feeds to this swirl pot that then feeds to this next high pressure pump. That's just, it was temporary and we ended up making it a bit nicer and neater and it's ended up being a permanent fixture in car, but we might change that in the future. I would like to put one of our twin pump setups on there, but I'm not sure they're released at this present time but anyway and then this has got a Varley um, solid uh, I can't remember exact uh, it's sealed anyway though it's still I think it's still a lead acid but this I think the glass matter so it's not got any actual liquid in it but we've got one of them in with um, Anderson plug to jump it off because they like to go flat every now and again but all oh, that's still working as it should zombie sticker for George plastic windows the rear window, this one looks a bit dodgy now, a bit scratched and a bit mucky, but this, we ended up making this ourselves and putting in a fiberglass oven over the original one and melted it round in. What a pain that turned into. We made all these ourselves. We bought, I think we bought these ones in. Or did we buy the sliders in? I can't remember. I think we bought the sliders in and we made uh, ours ourselves. So on the passenger side, all the ECUs tucked up here and the big rat's nest of wiring and stuff, so it's not ideal it's not nice and neat but it's as good as it can be and then you can see just under here that's the servo because we've got the servo on the front and the rear brakes just to try and make it better but to be fair we'll look at the brake system and there's a few little flaws in it that we might try and iron out but it does work as it is except when your carbon lorraine absolute dog turd pads decide to drop to bits and it locks the rear wheels up which i don't think we've got a video of wheels locking up but we'll definitely put a picture of pads being crap but anyway is what it is so and then that's the eater box which none of the eater box were already mounted when we got the car so we sort of unless we weld up a load of rolls we just left it where it was so this is a little bit untidy than i want it to be but it's functional rather than fashionable could spend weeks and weeks faffing about trying to make it all look better but it makes no difference so onto the visual stuff you can actually see here got the octavia 17 inch spiders Got one of our three inch side exit exhausts on here. The wheels are wrapped in the Yokohammer AO52s, which these are the tyre that we love. The mandate is one of the championships that we are supporting and sponsoring now, but we really do like and we're advocating these so much that that's how the deals all came along. We're running them at his own cost and testing them, and they worked out mint. And this has always ran on. Um, AO48s, sorry, AD08Rs, which they're a good tyre, very good road tyre, but for the track, I think we could get a bit more grip. So we've stuck a bit more camber on it last time we had it in, and then we've just literally today fitted these tyres, so they've just literally come in. So this is ready, ready to rock. Um, brakes, when you see underneath, you'll see why we've got these, but they're actually front brakes on the rear noisiest helicopter in the world going over. But these are um, front brakes on the rear of the car. That's why we've got the hydraulic handbrake. And then on the front, we've got our Porsche 312mm four pot arrangement. And that, I think that's running some RS29 pads, I believe. I think Brembo Sports in the rear, RS29 in the front. And um, yeah, they work pretty well. The balance is quite good because it's four wheel drive. You do want some bit bigger brakes at the back, but these are probably a bit too big. I'd like to put some different brakes on there, but anyway, hopefully we can get out in a, in a bit and take the top off these brand new tires, but we'll see. So I think what we'll do now, I'll put it into, uh, into the workshop. We'll get it up in the air and you'll see where all the work is because what you see on the surface is just only a tiny portion.
so finally got it on the ramp so it's a bit of a load of stuff going on here but I think let's start at the back and then we can work his way forward and I'm hoping I don't forget out but anyway so the first thing we get to rear anti-roll bar is actually the front anti-roll bar of a B8 sorry B6 RS4 or something like that but anyway this is an older one but they do a, the next thicker one is the same diameter but solid so anyway so the rear subframe although it looks very different <clears throat> it's pretty much a bodged up chopped up act up standard mark 1 tt um, subframe with all these extra bits added on to then have the custom arms on there and basically what you can see a mark 3 5 stud which this come with mark 2 4 stud hubs so this is what the tie rods for tie rod uh, is basically in place of where the steering rack normally so we can adjust the toe very easily on this by just lengthening or shortening that <coughs> the camber's adjusted on here on there and on the top mount so you've got three places you can adjust the camber we generally stick to leaving that as it is and pulling the top in but if we pull the top in loads so then we can make this a little bit longer and pull it out and extend the wheelbase a little bit rather than just keep pulling the wheels in so this mount used to be there for when the exhaust come out the back but it made a lot more sense to push it out the side there so it's got two little boxes in there and it's still it's not the noisiest but it's not the quietest either but it sounds pretty good so the rear dry shafts i can't remember if we shortened them or not i think the dry shafts are standard length from the tt but just with the different cvs put on so that they fit into the um mark three golf hubs <laughs> I'm not 100% sure. I hope that I hope that's on camera. What I've just seen at corner of my eye, but um, but yeah. So in essence, this is a Mark One TT rear diff, which a lot of people kept asking us when we first put picture of this up, what the ratio is and what have you. But these diffs are just one to one. All the diff petrol, diesel, whatever, they're all one to one to the transfer box, because the transfer box output shaft speed. Is dictated by whatever gear ratios you've got in so literally there's no difference in petrol to diesel ones all the mark one tt diesel petrol you know that sort of mark four golf all them all the same they're all exactly the same aldex anyway so what we had to do you can't really see it in the car but to make this work we've got basically a mark one tt slip ring behind the steering wheel which you probably saw that and then we've got the Mark 1 TT ABS ECU, so not the pump, just the ECU portion, tucked in one of the, uh, inside the side of the car. And then that's linked to <coughs> all the ABS rings on the car, which they've got to be the same tooth pattern as the Mark 1 TT. So in essence, the Aldex is just working from the, the wheel speed. It's not getting anything from the engine or anything like that. Literally, to run it standalone, you need all those bits and then it'll just work. When it sees a slip on the rear wheels, you'll get the, you'll get the four wheel drive. We've also got, it's pretty hard to see on these, really, it's all tucked up that way, but it's got one of our um, Aldex inserts that makes it grip more aggressively, and it works really well. It doesn't, it doesn't drive like a sort of Tors and four wheel drive, that's 50-50 all the time, or the, the new ones that are 60-40 yeah. and 65-35, whatever. It just feels really neutral. You drive it like a front wheel drive car, but the back wheels are doing a little bit of work. So you come out of a corner and normally you sort of understeer loads if you want on the power. You still get a bit of understeer, but it, it grips nice. You don't get that wheel spin sort of on corner exit, but anyway. So little fuel core here, which that's not in an ideal spot. It wore up the front, but we've not just got no room at the front. If the fuels keeps getting hot, which it's not really been doing, we might end up putting um, putting some duct into that or moving it a little bit but where it is at the minute it's fine the fuel tank absolutely ate it wish it had never got it on don't know how we'd do it differently if we did it ourselves but we definitely wouldn't do what this is so we'll uh, talk about that later the prop shaft is a shortened version that's had to be balanced and everything of the standard Mark 1 TT it's not much short I think only an inch or something like that but 
the tunnel's all standard, except we've had to weld these little bits in for the brackets, for the centre bearing. But all that is standard. Obviously, to bolt the rear subframe up, you could see in the boot, there's loads of custom tubes joining the chassis legs together and what have you. That's to hold that up. Um, so then onto the front, this is all custom to us as well. It did originally have all the um, Citigo subframe on there still, but it was a really big bulky thing and it made getting everything in quite tight. So we did the best, the best job we could and basically made a subframe that fitted as standard, but moved things in a little bit different way. The bottom arms are a little bit higher up, which should help things a little bit. I did want to put extended balls on some, but they wouldn't fit. But then this anti-roll bar, which only just fits, even though everything's custom, it only just fits. It's a shortened rear Mark V Golf one. So I don't like a big anti-roll bar on the front, so we just got away with this one. And it seems to work pretty well. If we wanted to go for something bigger, we just need to get another one for Mark V Golf and just chop a couple inch out at the middle. And then that's on shortened drop links. It go up to some brackets that we welded onto strut bottoms. So the suspension all the way around, I've not really talked about the struts. They're all custom made to our sort of specs and then valved to suit our weights by uh, John at Black Art Designs. He did that, took a lot of time to get these right. We had to machine all the bottoms, which got some pictures of what they looked like before. And real pain to get this car to sit how we wanted and where it was. Nobody create, nobody would do us four shocks off the front of a Mark II, Mark III Golf in the length we wanted with the spring rates and the valve. So it took a bit of work. Maybe they would now, now they see the project done, but at the time we couldn't get it done. Custom bottom arms, that we've got two options for the drop links. We used to have them on there, but we've moved them up to the strut now because it just made more sense. The beef for steering rod, like I mentioned before, and then that's going to some custom rose jointed extended knuckles to get rid of the bump steer. So this has got no bump steer whatsoever now, it's absolutely perfect. But these were a pain to source, everything were a pain to fit. It's been an hell of a lot of work. Custom dog bone mount that we made to suit this. Obviously it's in a B for gearbox in a Skoda City Go chassis, so it was never gonna be standard. And then just got one of our shallow sumps on there. See the custom boost pipe, brake duct team that goes to the top of the disc there. Got all the braided hoses that we normally use. And Tons really, really else to see on here. I'm sure I've missed absolutely loads of stuff. Seat transfer case, custom dry shafts that we've had shortened exactly to our specs. I think there's a spacer at the back of them as well when we went a bit wider because we get a med before and then we went wider track again when we pulled wheels out. And you can just see what's going on with radiator system. So we've got an ox circuit on there as well as trying to keep it as cool as we can. We want it to come up to temp pretty quick. You can just see the bit of beef of power steering pump in there, so it's all really crammed in there. And everything's on rose joints as well, so, and it's not as harsh as you'd think, it's pretty stiff. And I think this is the only power flex bush we've got on the car, and that's the uh, exhaust bushing. So, yeah, I've probably gone on about it too much. I'm sure there'll be tons of questions. So, ask away in the comments, and we'll put them on, and we'll... Uh, We'll see how things go. We'll get it on the road, but that'll be next time. So this is what I've already waffled on enough. Stay tuned in and you'll see some interesting stuff.